Hi, can we have floating columns in a building? This is what we will discuss today. I already have a blog around it and a student read this and wanted a clarification and I thought I will do that by a quick video that explains what I wanted to convey. Hi all, this is Premjit here from Civilera.com. Before we proceed, I request you to subscribe to Civilera YouTube channel and also hit the bell icon so that you get alerts whenever a new video is released. I also suggest you to read this blog in addition to seeing this video and I have given the blog link in the description. I also request you to like and share the video. I want to keep this video really short and explain you the close. This is from IS 1893-2016 and it clearly tells you this is mentioned where the court talks about the irregularity and where the court has given the table for irregularity. So you can go and check that part of the code and find this so it's the sixth point in the vertical irregularity part and it clearly says that such columns are likely to cause concentrated damage in the structure so the code is clear that it wants to rule out any kind of concentrated local failure which can trigger much more collapse and disproportionate damage so it says that this feature is undesirable and hence should be prohibited if it is a part of or supporting the primary lateral load resisting system. This clearly means that you need to avoid this being a lateral resistant system. It cannot be a part nor it can support a part which is going to be lateral resisting. Which means that if I take the example of this particular building and if I zoom here, this column as a whole cannot be part of the lateral load resisting system. Now, in case if you had one more floor above this and if you have an RC wall or anything for whatever reason if you have any structure which is supported on that particular column even that cannot be part of the lateral resisting system. It can be a column which carries only gravity load that's fine but then it cannot be a part of the frame that takes the lateral load. So how can you achieve that? I'm not taking any software and then explaining it. You can achieve this very well by ensuring releases in the right way so that only the vertical load get transferred. You can release the moments and ensure that the moment action doesn't come into play and ensure that only the vertical loads are transferred into that particular column. Now please carefully listen that you should not be pinning here. You should not take any pin support in the global model and then analyze that's a grave mistake. I have seen young students doing this at some point in time which will create a huge difference in your analysis and it's a mistake. Use the releases in the right way. Pinning means that it's a support and a lot of lateral load is going to get attracted even the vertical load is going to get attracted to that particular point and the action of the beam the floating column transferring the load onto that beam which is supporting that column that action goes off so it's a grave mistake transfer beam is under designed and you are making a huge mistake I wanted to point this out because I've seen somebody doing this and thought that young students should not make this mistake Lastly, I want to bring your attention to IS 13920, which is the ductile detailing code clause 5.5. It says that RC regular moment resisting frame buildings shall have planar frames oriented along the two principal plan directions of buildings. Irregularities listed in IS 1893 shall be avoided. Buildings with any of the listed irregularities perform poorly during earthquake shaking. In addition, Buildings with floating columns and setback columns also perform poorly. When any such irregularities are adopted, detailed non-linear analysis shall be performed to demonstrate that there is no threat to loss of life and property. So these two clauses make it really clear that floating columns are undesirable, but then you can use that as a gravity column, ensuring that you have alternate load paths. Probably the next question will be how many floating columns can I have? There is no hard and fast rule code doesn't say how many the point is that you need lateral resistance and you need to ensure that the floating columns are not part of the lateral resisting mechanism so if we can achieve that that's what matter and not the numbers so it's very clear that the numbers should be really really less you cannot float too many number of columns in a floor and then try to meet the requirement it might not be really possible so that's all i wanted to convey today thank you for watching